Hello and welcome to Den of the Weird. I'm here today again with Dave Magnums and Joshua to talk about our favorite board games. So we are more than halfway through. Today we're going to cover the games from the 20th place to the 11th. So it's getting serious now. Yeah, How is everyone? Before. <laughs> it wasn't, no, before I think it was relaxed. You know, the few crossovers, but not much. Now it's going to be it's going to be the tough one. Yeah. Well, I'm fine. I don't know about the rest. Yeah. I'm good. Very apart from the whole camera business, but I'll figure that out. No, but this, I, I, I think most people just listen to it. So yeah, I, that's, I understand. That's what I tell you. myself. I understand. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. So I'll, I'll go first. Uh, in twentieth place, there's the game that it's it's a card game. It's not a board game, but still counts. Orc Quest. Now, apart from the cover, if you go and and search for it, apart from the cover, it has nothing to do with Hero Quest. Completely different game. Well, that's. It, to interrupt, that's not quite true. A lot of the cards and themes are based around HeroQuest, it being the anti-thesis of HeroQuest, especially since the characters are really, really uh, taken on, on HeroQuest tropes. So, um, uh, it, but the gameplay, mechanic-wise, exactly, yes. Nothing to do, which is the important bit, because yeah. I'm not a fan of HeroQuest. So it's a card game, it, it's a party play. game. And it's hard, you know. It's it has. Imagine it look fun D and D in, in card game as a, as as a party game, pretty much. Not that you have your characters, but it's it's a great game to um, be nasty to each other and just laugh. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I'm. We always, mm -hmm. <laughs> ever since we got this game, and we have new people coming to to play. We always have plans, you know, to teach this big game or whatever. And uh, we start with this introduction just to get the party going, and then we ended up playing it all night. It has happened a couple of times because it's just that kind of game. It goes very well with drinking and just you know <laughs> fun. Fifteen to forty-five minutes looks very fast. Uh, it can depends. be extremely fast, or or in lag. Uh, not not in a bad way, lag. It just it, it can kind of become a, a tactical. Uh, I don't know what I'm trying to say. It, 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 because you can kind of layer backstabbing, if you like. One person, whoever turn it is, can get backstabbed, and that can get reversed. Then someone else can join in. Then mm -hmm. it, it can kind of, it, it can really just turn around. And uh, one of the key components is that you have a, a turn marker, and it really is necessary to know whose turn it actually is because. All hell can just break loose with people diving in, joining in, and playing stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Sounds cool. So yeah, it, it can get chaotic. I mean, it's not that similar to Munchkin uh, uh -huh. uh, in in effect, if you like. Um, but uh, I, oh, think, yeah. I think in many ways it could be quite quite a bit more fun than Munchkin. Actually, it it really goes for the backstabbing and screwing each other over. Um, yeah. Quite uh, early, so we used to play it a lot. We used to play it a lot in player until we played it with more people, and then all of a sudden it was like, yeah, okay, this is this is how it's supposed to be. Yeah, we we forgot to mention that uh, Dave is a transformer uh, tonight. Uh. <laughs> is it is it happening? Because obviously for me it's not happening. Yeah. So yeah, so yeah maybe it's maybe it's an improvement. Okay, just roll with it. <laughs> yeah. It's all good. It's, all, it's intentional. So yeah, okay. Uh, um, but it sounds amazing. Oh, there was one. There was one other thing I was going to say about it actually, because we we got the game for free, um, ah, because we okay. were at we were at a, a little uh, board games convention that happens near us in Limerick. NaveCon, shout out to NaveCon. Uh, this, the next one's on April the sixth. In fact. Um, but uh, they have a bring and buy store, you know, like uh, uh, you just bring your games and kind of sell them, write your information on the games and walk away. And then uh, it's a sort of meta game where you have to hunt down the, whoever owns the game you want to buy. And there was this guy who, who was selling a load of stuff. Um, and I think uh, one of them is Kronos, and that's where I managed to track down Kronos, wasn't it? That's good. So um, uh, kind of to call this, this number that was written on these games. 
uh, and he came over and chatted and stuff. And then he just started piling extra games on top, and he's like, do you want this? Do you want this? Do you want this? And one of the games he, he ended up giving me for free to just take away was Orquest because it was missing some of the, I think it was the hit point tokens. You know, it depends on like little yeah. heart. But yeah, yeah. anyone who's into games has plenty of replacement components like that, right? True. Um, so, and then it kind of sat on a pile of, of unused games for a little bit until we got bored, broke it up, and suddenly it just shot to the top of our, our played list. <laughs> free, man. You know, never yeah, refuse yeah. a free game. Even if it looks nonsense, never yeah. refuse a free yeah. game. Yeah, I, I was a bit reluctant to play the first time because it looked ridiculous, but it's a lot of fun. So I recommend it. All right. A lot of fun. Okay. Your turn, Dave. Well, I can. <clears throat> okay, so keeping the same order, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so my second highest, most hated, and overrated game is Cards Against Humanity. <laughs> Magnus um, loves you now. It's fine. And I just des I despise this game. Mm -hmm. um, and not it's not really the game's fault. It's it's the people who play it. And it's not really just the people who play it. It's the the people who stand as women. It's the type of people who come and ask me if they have it in our collection to play it uh, because. Okay, so this is me gatekeeping it, really, isn't it? And maybe I, I should be I, I circumspect sold it about it. I, I sold it recently uh, because I know it's it's not going to get played anymore. Um, it's It just works if you're in the, the right environment with the right people because it's, it's vulgarity and nonsense. But if nobody wants to really play a game and you go to a board game shop, owning a board game shop, Mm -hmm. then it's a perfect game then it's like okay so you want to drink and just have fun there you go it's there's so many better options for them if yeah, they only knew yeah. and it's one of those and things still, where people and go still... and play it and settle there instead of you know and that's what i have against it really it's, it's that idea of the lowest common denominator basically it it's um, still after they played it, it's still so like hotcakes. It's it's crazy. There there's enough mm -hmm. people who who really love it, and it's just not for us. Well, a better option. So as I say, it's uh... a better option for if you if you like Cards Against Humanity and actually want to play a good game. It's not a, a board game, but uh, it's a party game on PC. And you all need to have a phone. Jackbox Party Pack, Quiplash. Just whip that out. Uh, <laughs> then you can actually be funny by yourself. I mean, I, I, I played it. Well, and yeah. I would rather play uh, <laughs> Cards Against Humanity. No, no, no. No, no, no. Then you don't. I mean, then you're, you're writing the stuff that is funny. I mean, mm -hmm. otherwise, you just fill in with yeah. cards that other people have wrote. It's. Written, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of yeah. cheap, but yeah. I mean, if people have fun, good on them, but uh, I usually we to don't. Judge? Mm. Well, sometimes we can judge, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sometimes. We're going to get judged for our list, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh. well, anyway, right, well, there you go. Cards Against Humanity. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I, yeah, just, yeah. I just think anyone who enjoys that can do better. So that's why it's it's there. Agreed. Agreed. Yes. <laughs> Never so. played. I am afraid to. <laughs> <laughs> what if I enjoy it? Then be a problem. All right. Well, then uh, I don't think you go. will well, enjoy we, it. No, we did have, we did have guests come to the house, uh, who got really excited about all the board games we have here, um, and really wanted to talk about it. And then, and it's like, okay, well, there's these and these, and what sort of games do you want to play? And all they wanted to play was Cards Against Humanity. And go. it just, you know, it just upset me. Yeah, it was the same in the shop. It's, it's crazy that that's the kind of people. There are people that just play that and nothing else. Yeah. No. Yeah. Move along. <laughs> <laughs> All right. My number twenty is a deck builder, and it's called Clank in Space. 
Ah, yeah, I know it. So this is the version that came out after regular Clank and before uh, Acquisitions, I think, the legacy game. Um, it is similar or almost the same as Clank, but set in, in uh, a spaceship where you're supposed to raid and there's an overlord captain on the spaceship that you have to avoid. It has a little bit more complexity maybe to um, the original Clank, uh, but yeah, otherwise it's pretty similar. And um, I love the fact that there's many different cards in the deck and there's synergies and stuff. Your deck usually gets quite big, but there's so many combos to draw new cards. So you can like draw uh, <laughs> maybe 10 cards in a round if you build your deck right. So it's, it's, it's another fun. one that I really want to play. I haven't played mm -hmm. Clank in space. So have I, you played I, Clank? I, like, uh, just like I had the um, explanation, uh, I got the explanation. I played one round and then move along. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I haven't finished a game of Clank yet. Hmm. We shall uh, arrange that. Soon. I'm looking forward to getting uh, the legacy version to, to start with Magnus. Um, hmm. And I am looking at Catacombs because it's not a, um, it's not a, a static map. It's mm -hmm. tiles, so the map layout changes, so, so there aren't um, uh, meta moves or, or just the same moves every time, uh, even mm -hmm. though the, the cards are different. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that one too. Yeah, so Clank in Space is in the middle of those two games. Yeah, yeah. So they have modular boards, which you can flip and place on different, yeah. but, but not as much as uh, Catacombs. And is Catacombs it. a standalone game? Yeah. Or yeah. That's the new, newest version. There's yeah. just there's a lot of entries in the board game geek to work through. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was my number twenty, and also I've managed to get uh, Kelly's top twenty. Awesome! Woo! Excellent! All right, go. So, so just to explain uh, why. I haven't uh, her top 50 is because she has maybe played over 50 games or probably has, mm. but that's it. Like uh, all of them she doesn't like and yeah. maybe some of them she only played once. And But the uh, top 20 we managed to do. Maybe Excellent. we could have done it top 25, but 20 we go. So the, the first one on the number 20 will make Joshua ha happy. <laughs> it's Dragon Castle. Oh, amazing. Mm -hmm. So she she really liked that one. Uh, and Joshua had it on his <coughs> list before, so. Yeah, Dragon Castle, yeah. my own variant, uh, mm -hmm. taking tiles, uh, building mm -hmm. your own uh, city. It's fast, it's fun, excellent two-player game. You you uh, say it's fast, but I mean Mayong isn't fast, so is it? No, no, this variant it looks like Mayong, and you have. Right, the, the, I mean, even like the tiles there. look. Yeah. look like Mayong. But yeah, yeah, Dave, the there's setup a caveat. Is longer than the game almost. <laughs> uh, the the uh, publisher is uh, Simon, so. <laughs> oh, it, it, they. Yes, but it doesn't right. have lots of miniatures, so it's all right. Mm -hmm. It's all it's right, horrible right. guild, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the original one. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Nice. That is an excellent choice. Yeah. Uh, right. That's nice. My number twenty. Um, it's a, a card drafting game, uh, which has four rounds, and uh, it's an engine builder. So we are uh, building our own tableau, getting resources. And uh, when we build a building, we get more resources and points, grab a lot of points. It's a wonderful world. We played this this year. Uh, we loved it so much that we played it, uh, I think, five times now. <laughs> it's, it's fun. Um, we played it with two players and three players. 
and it plays amazing with everything everyone because uh it's simultaneous uh, action so we are drafting the cards uh taking one card and then revealing it at the same time getting new cards from the other players drafting a card revealing it at the same time stuff and uh so on and then we decide if we want to build a card or throw it away to get resources. If we want to build it, we need to get resources on it. And that's uh, when the uh, phase that we get um, resources for the build uh, buildings uh, happens. And then uh, we go from left to right uh, following the arrow. It's a very easy to teach game. Uh, harder to master because there are synergies with every color. So there are different colors to get different resources and score different ways. Two players, you can do it in about half an hour. Uh, it's, it's just that fast. So what I found fascinating about this game is that uh, usually I like my engine builders to be a bit longer to, to produce more. So in yep. this game, you only have, as Yosha said, four rounds. Yep. And you produce. Is it only three times then? No, no, no. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So you produce three times from your buildings. Oh like wait, wait, no, you no. You up. produce, you produce a fourth time because you need uh, to build the last building as well. Ah, uh, maybe, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and then you score points uh, at the end for every, for all the buildings you, oh, you yeah. made. Yeah. So in that sense, it sounds like how am I to even do stuff in the game? But you, you, you'll be, you'll be surprised at, at the end how much you can do. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to getting uh, one expansion for this, uh, which gives uh, a lot more cards. There are a lot of cards in the deck, but after playing five times, I think we saw everything, and now we're like, we want more. <laughs> <laughs> the so, expansion uh, has been hard to find. No, no. Uh, in, Bel in Belgium, there's still a Dutch version, but because the cards are uh, language independent, it doesn't matter. Uh, there's no language on the cards, so we're just going to buy that one. Oh, nice. This one is uh, just outside my top 20. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm surprised that uh, you like it so much, given those Indiana Jones-esque cards that I see here. Uh, Ark of the Covenant. Treasure of the Templars? Yeah, but those are from one of the expansions, I think. Oh, OK, uh, so that's so all I know. Depending yeah. on which expansion. <laughs> <laughs> Take those cards out. Well, I'm just looking at the pics of the of the base game, and, and there it is, Ark of the Covenant with Indiana Jones. Yeah, right it, front there, and there are even, even uh, uh, I think, uh, there, there are a couple of blue cards that are mythical with uh, with some satyrs, I think. It's, it's super Oh, wow, it, OK. It's all kind of things jam together uh but number 20 it's a wonderful world uh definitely one uh, just to try out for for everyone yeah. i think I, I like the look of it i have to say it looks good mm -hmm. yeah. uh and then for saskia number 20 is uh an oldie but a goldie the original ticket to ride mm. I, I mean just can't beat it can't can't beat it ticket to ride is it's gonna stay in our collection forever so yeah yeah, mm -hmm. I agree. If it's only just it's, it's it so easy to pull out and, and play with anybody. I think yeah. our copy actually belongs to my parents. Um, <laughs> so it's not really our copy. We we just borrowed it indefinitely for now. Mine is uh, still the yeah. one I bought as my first board game when I really start to get into the hobby. So yeah. I know you talked about it in one of the earlier episodes, but which is your favorite version? The original. The original over Europe. Let me see. Over over Did, Europe. Yeah, yeah. Europe just complicates things that doesn't need to be complicated. Oh, but they're Europe. not that complex. No, ma. Yeah, I really, I really love Europe as well. It's just mm. maybe it's the nostalgia for me. Maybe. Sure, sure. I mean, there's always that the first game, you know. So. And yeah. Europe is also harder to teach to. Uh, be careful what I say now, older people. Uh, <laughs> I played Ticket to Ride with with uh, aunts, uncles, and, and mm. up. Uh, I mean, it doesn't, doesn't really matter. I mean, people above 60. <laughs> I, I, think they're, I think they're pretty similar. I just prefer Europe because of the map, I think. Yeah, the, the map is more interesting. Yeah, uh, that not, I not to look at, I mean, to actually play with. 
I don't like the gimmick with the you need to uh, draw three cards and see no. which color comes. Yeah, in, that, well, that, for that, the tunnels. Like yeah. yeah. No, that's so brilliant. Much. But the the thing I can't remember, and I was going to ask, was did they introduce the idea of uh, two routes or, or two tracks for the same route for Europe, or was that in the original one as well? Yeah, you know where you have uh, as well. If you're playing two players, you can only use one of those two. Sure, sure, sure. But but if you three or more, you can use the two. And that yeah. was in the original, was it? Yeah, it's a long time since yeah. I played the, the the first one, so I couldn't yeah. remember if that was something because that is great. So if that had been a, a European innovation, then uh, is uh, nice. major plus point. But no, so it was really just it was the stations and the tunnels. Yeah, yep. that that's added. that's in the Europe mm -hmm. uh, version. That's new. Yeah, yeah. Oh no! Also, the um, the ferries wasn't in the original as well. There's ferries. Yeah, we yeah. like going from uh, the UK to mainland Europe. You have to use uh, yeah, 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 uh, yeah, 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 a yeah. wild and then something else. Yeah. Good, good. We play it sometimes still. Yeah. And what it's one of those games that has now filtered its way into just the high street toy shops, which I mean, I know there's a lot of them in there now, along with Cards Against Humanity and Exploding Kittens and I, all that nonsense. It's been you have Catan, in there. You have, like even in Ireland, you go into a toy shop and you will find, or or a bookshop, or you know that sort of high street store. And, um, before 2015, that, even before yeah. 2015. Yeah. So. Yeah. So. In this okay. Age. So, number 19. Uh, I think it's a crossover with Dave, and I think I thought about, um, I talked about it before. We have Orimantic. Mm. It's uh, broken. It's, mm. I'm convinced that game is broken, but I never get, get tired of trying to fix it or even finding out new ways of how things can go wrong because it's so broken. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I, I like it because when it works, it works really, really well. And um, even when it doesn't work, it's always interesting to see just and, how. And it's, it's not like you put a lot of investment in in it to the point no, where no, it's, it's frustrating if 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 all of a sudden you're just like, no, this just this one is not working for whatever reason. Well, no, we we so. had to put a cap on how, ma how many points you would accumulate um, before we kind of realize, okay, we need to stop because it's not going anywhere. And this was after I was 100 points ahead, so that was cool. Yeah, was <laughs> I had the little strop and said, no, we're going to have to stop this. Only 100 points, huh? Yeah, strop yeah. is a strong word. But <laughs> again, another one of those games that we got for next to nothing in, in a stented sale or something, and sure, why not? And it turned out to be a lot of fun. Or we got a lot of fun from it, shall we say. So. Yeah, yeah, just to put things into perspective, or those 100 points into perspective, scores can be anything from zero, one. Mostly three, zero. Three, yeah. Mostly zero, yeah. Uh, to, you know, normal scores within, you know, 15, 20, you know, 20, 25, something like that, or very close. But yeah, it really could be 112 to one. It's, it can happen. It's just. It's Basically, broken. there's a winner and a loser. That's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that's a yeah. <laughs> We tried to play it with, with more people to see how it worked. Maybe it was just a problem. With <gasps> once we tried it, once. <laughs> once we tried, and we ran out of pieces very quickly. Yeah. So it's just not meant ran to out of it. It's just. And so where, where's the rest of the pieces? Well, you, no, there's you no know, ones that Every game with lots of components in the rule book, there's always the stipulation as to whether pieces are uh, exhaustible or not, or are finite or not, or you know some are and some aren't. I mean, pretty much it's a standard in every rule book. Literally nothing mentioned in the rule book for this one, nothing at all. So I guess <laughs> I guess play testing just never really got to that point. But uh, yeah, I love That's that game. Pretty. Hate that game. <laughs> it's yeah, it's it's fun. It's always fun. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, on to me. Yep. Uh, so my second place sold and regret game uh, was a game called Hybrid, um, which is uh, a miniatures skirmish game, but it is definitely a board game. There's 
the, the, the map tiles laid out. I mean, it's sort of, uh, you wouldn't say it's a dungeon delver uh, because it is, in a sense, one side against another side. So it is kind of a skirmish. Um, but it, it was... It was quite expensive. It was hard to track down. The company, Rackham, they were at one point one of the big competitors with uh, Games Workshop on Private Air Press, maybe in yeah. the sort of early noughties. Uh, French company, the most amazing artwork. Uh, the stuff I, that I played the uh, uh, Rush and Crush from them. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, which itself was another spin off. This, this was a spin off from there their uh, sort of tabletop games. Um, but it just had, it had a very, very interesting action point mechanic. I mean, it was almost a role-playing game, more so than our modern kind of uh, board game, role-playing game crossovers are. are um, uh, this was, this it was quite crunchy, quite, quite deep. Um, and I loved it. I mean, it was just, it was, it was just a gorgeous package. And I went and tracked down the expansion, which was in a foreign language, and then I had to track down the individual cards that were in English to replace those that were. I, I went all out on this one, painted the miniatures, everything, which was very rare for me because it's a different discussion. But I have a thing, even though I'm, I'm a war gamer and I paint miniatures, I yeah. do not paint miniatures that belong to board games. That's that's something that I, I believe is is wrong. Um, but I painted the miniatures for this, and the one time I had a proper game of it, uh, my girlfriend at the time, sorry, Susanna, had gone away, and I got friends around, and we dived into this, and we were there for about five, six hours, and I think we got like four turns played, if even that, and got very, <laughs> not very far into it. But I was so happy just even with that. There were tokens flying all over the place and dice and, oh, yeah. So um, yeah. the artwork so, is amazing. Uh, I mean, it's it's just gorgeous. That whole, uh, the Cadwellan setting and uh, just, yeah. I mean, the, the guys working on this, the sculptors, the artists, they were top tier in the industry at that point. Um, uh, you know, some of them XGW, some of them, GW wishes they had on their payroll at some point. And, um, yeah, I, I, again, like this, this uh, 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 Paolo Parenti was one of the artists. He was the guy who created Dust, which is another one of my favorite games that you guys discussed before. And yeah, just, just very cool. Anyway, I, I mean, it really goes nowhere because uh, it's a it's a dead end game, really. But uh, I would I would love to still have that set that I had to covet and, and cherish. Uh, and, and I'm sorry I don't. So yeah. You messed up. Yeah, I messed up. <laughs> yeah. I got a good price for it though, believe me. But um, yeah, I regret. So yeah. All right, sounds cool. My number 19 is a game by, when I looked at the cover the first time, I thought it looked ugly. <laughs> despite being a space game but some some space games don't have like super great covers and this is one of them but the gameplay is really fascinating and something that clicked with me instantly so it's a game called space station phoenix have you heard of that one heard of it haven't played it looking forward to it <laughs> it's a new so one. in this game you're each building a space station uh, to host um, aliens from different places all over the world or universe. Galaxy, yeah. Yeah, galaxy. So uh, by doing that, you have a fleet of um, spaceships that does different things like build uh, another structure to the space station or <coughs> trade stuff to um, yeah it's a resource resource management game kind of thing but when you run out of steel which is one of the most important things in the uh, the game to build uh, more rooms to the space station you have to use a spaceship to destroy another of your spaceships so then effectively you get less and less options from your own fleet 
as you go by. So you start up, start off with many different actions which you can take or worker placement spots, and then you go down. But you can also use other spaceships. So that's another tactic. You can use it, but then you have to pay resources to the, the one you used it for. But then you also block it for them. So, yeah, it's a pretty sounds... cool game. It it looks, uh, by looking at it, it looks super complex, <laughs> at least I think. But it's not <laughs> as, I mean, it's maybe a midweight. Mm. It's but pretty it... easy to teach once you get to start to play it it sounds interesting with starting with everything and in ending up like lesser and lesser resources and and trying to to do some actions that you really still wanted to getting there mm -hmm. yeah it's no what to play it it looks really yeah. cool uh but this yeah I'm, I'm looking at a photo of all the components on this very small looking round table uh, just a two-player game, and it's just, it's chaotic. Yeah, there's many <clears throat> components to this game. So, I mean, each different room is like a specific tile. Uh, so, yeah. The, oh, and there's many of them. So you have, first mm. you have a starting hub, which is different. So you start as asymmetric, and I think, I don't know if they have two sides, but there's many. Like there's nice. uh, quite a lot of variety in the 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 main box, and they have also said to come out with an expansion, which won't fit in the box. I can tell you that <laughs> because this is shock full. Us. Yeah. Okay. So that was my number nineteen, and Kelly's nice. is another one with not a space fleet but with a shipping fleet fleet the dice game fleet yeah so Go. this one is a roll and write but a more complex roll and write than oh. your ah, yeah, yeah 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 so it's a good game uh looks also more complex than it is, but it is quite more involved than your typical role, right? So you it's you have quite a lot of cascading turns like in Ganshan Clever. Like I tick this and I can tick that and stuff like that. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, I was surprised actually that it went this high up her list, but I mean she she liked the place of it. So I, I like the I theme I and I was looking forward to playing the normal version, but this looks like a better re-implementation of the base game. Mm -hmm. And I haven't heard much about the, the original game, but this yeah. one has gotten high high praise. Yeah. I also have from the same designers uh, a game called uh, Three Sisters, which I prefer over this one, but it's quite similar in, in style. Yeah. Three Sisters. I want to play yeah. this one as well. Excellent. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, it looks good. Uh, you're fishing, I guess, right? That's yeah, the, you have a fishing uh, armada or fleet or whatever mm. you call it. And specialize in different kinds of fish that you want. Yeah, to I'm seeing catch. lobsters, I'm seeing shrimps, cods. Yeah. Like, Excellent. It, it looks nice. The, uh, the, the design, the graphic design is pretty nice. Yep. Um, I go for that. Mm -hmm. All right, number nineteen for me. Um, this was uh, this used to be my favorite uh, Uwe Rosenberg game. Uh, I want to play it more to get it back up there. Um, and we're staying in uh, boats, the boat theme. So for me, number nineteen is La Havre. Mm. Mm. Getting resources, building new buildings, uh, making those resources into something else, uh, and uh, getting new boats, getting food for those boats. Always it's, food. Oh, I, the first time I played this game, I was so bewildered, and it, it was so much AP for me. 
there, there, there was just too much, too many options. And then at a certain point, it's like, oh, and the game is done, and I haven't done everything. Mm. One of those. <laughs> he loves love those. It. Yes, yeah. yes. I, I really, the, the really theme is it. so dry on this one. Yeah. Mm. Right. Dry <laughs> themes. I like it. <laughs> oh, mm. Even, even the artwork. It's it's when well, the first time <laughs> I looked at the box and was like, this is ugly. I'm gonna buy this. Um, <laughs> it plays well with two, but it's better with three. It is so much better with three. Uh, mm. the, more buildings, more actions. It's their interactions. Yeah, yeah, it's 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 more balanced with three. I heard that uh, it's terrible at five. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a long game. It, it says uh, 150 minutes uh, on BGG. Yeah, more than that even. It's it's crazy. So two or three, no more. Um, and the solo, you haven't tried, I guess. I don't play solo. No. I'm sorry. <laughs> But I got early... I got this game second hand and I can't yeah. wait to, to try it. Oh, me, me too, man. It's, uh, I want to play it again uh, because if I play it again, I, I know it's going to go higher as in it's going to be tougher to get my list together again. I think next year we're going to have to do a top 100 just to be sure. <laughs> <laughs> Don't miss anything. <laughs> the, these 50 games can go up and then new 50. Uh... <laughs> But uh, number 19, Le Havre, uh, Uwe Rosenberg uh, at his peak. Um, number 19 for Saskia. Ha. This one I really want to play because the game she played was so good, was so fun to watch. It's three to five players. The player interaction was bonkers. This game was, everybody was laughing. People were standing around the table for this game. Cosmic Encounter. Ah, that's an old game, or at least it goes yeah. back a ways, depending on yeah. the, the so edition. Yeah, so not the, the newest yeah. uh, version, the, the, the one, uh, the older version. So she, uh, it's, it's, player elimination is in there, uh, mm -hmm. trying to be the, the last alien race and stuff. And they were having the time of their lives and at the last possible moment she was about to win someone else said oh i have the alien race that can choose to switch alien races <laughs> <laughs> switches and she the other player wins everybody lost their shit. it's it's just uh, it has nonsense uh, fun yeah, yeah. It, it's it's more a party game with um um uh, uh different powers uh what, what is it called again um asymmetric powers. asymmetrical power powers yeah mm. so i really i really want to play this i still have it in the collection so looking forward to trying this it out. does need multiple players but i see there's uh there's a two-player version now there's a, a i version. have heard it's okay I, um, no, it doesn't really count. It, it, it didn't sell well. Uh, it even went down to, I think, 10 uh, pounds or something at a certain point that okay. they were getting rid of it. So I don't know. Um, but this one I really want to try. Cosmic Encounter. Yeah, it's one. like I, I remember going to a, uh, a game stay thing that used to be, or it's, I think it's still held in Dublin, but like when I was a kid uh, with my brother, like maybe... I don't know, 14, no, not even, 13, 14. And f we didn't know what was going on. There was loads of people, didn't know what was going on, didn't have any games with this or anything. Uh, we were barely into D&D &D and stuff at that point. And we went over to a big table full of games, and the game we picked up and brought back to the table was the, the uh, yeah, the, I'm looking at it here, the 90s version of Cosmic Encounter. Uh, and we sat there and tried to learn it and didn't get very far, and it very quickly went back on the table. But it always sat with me as something that uh, I was intrigued by, and I still haven't actually played a game of it. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm there the, with you. Whenever we do, I'm there with you. 2008 version that we have, so... It's the, the, is that FFG one? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think they rebalance quite a lot for that, as it was, though. It does um, need balance. It's, it's a party game. <laughs> tweaked, then we'll say. It didn't, yeah, not, not rebalance, but tweak things to make it more fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
God, there's a version from 77, apparently. Wow. wow. It goes back. Okay, right. cool. Uh, number 17. Uh, 18. Uh, 18. 18, sorry. Right. <laughs> 18. <laughs> it's a game that uh, it's a crossover with a couple of you, and you talk about it all the time. Fist for Odin. Uh, it started, <clears throat> pardon, it started higher, but um, it did just get me pushed down. And it, it's not because of the game itself, it's because of the amount of trouble that it is to assemble and put away. <laughs> so um, if it was just a, just the game, it would be higher. But as it is, we, I just don't have the patience to play it, just to assemble it. So it's a bit I'm just glad it's higher than Agricola. It's, I mean, it's... Yeah, it's still higher than Agricola, yeah. yeah. But... Not on my list. <laughs> Shame? <laughs> uh, the, yeah, there you go. Excellent choice. Excellent pick. Oh. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Me? So uh, so actually, because just before the show, Susanna told me that we were going to have a back-to-back -back Feast of Odin, uh, I actually had a thought about it and decided to change. So I've had my... <laughs> no, everyone's allowed one. Everyone no, is allowed one. No, 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 yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. no, no, because, no, no, no. Because, because I actually didn't think I wanted to, because this is my frustrated love uh, category, and I, I didn't want to slam Feast of Odin because I'm I, I actually do like it, um, uh, so uh, and I like it more than Agricola, which is why it's it's not going behind Agricola here. Anyway, uh, but there's also a, a game that I really should have put on the list. It's one of those Susanna's had a few now uh, that should have been on the list and and isn't, uh, and that's uh, Discworld and An Ank Morpok. Um, uh, it's the so, one with the flying turtle. The one with the flying turtle on the cover, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, the one that I, I that uh, out of print, of course. And when Sir Terry passed away, yeah. the price on it skyrocketed. And and the issue is, on paper, it should be amazing, right? Because it's Discworld. If you're a Discworld fan, I'm a Discworld fan. That in itself is a selling point. It's by Martin Wallace, great designer, massive selling point. It has amazing artwork. Um, oh, the artist being because uh, uh, I always get them confused. The two cover artists that that have done most of the Discworld books. It's Kid B, not Kirby. Yeah, so it's it's. Uh, uh, oh, I could just look it up. Yeah, yeah. Paul Kid. Dennis Paul Kid. Uh, yeah, but most of the the character portraits are done by Paul Kid. who does who does the more modern versions of the the covers he took over from Josh Kirby, uh, and um, so basically everything about it should make it an amazing game that should be cherished and loved by all, and especially so sought after and everything uh, because it went out of print. Um, but it's just a really dull game. Um, I mean, there's, there's kind of, there's nothing to it. It's basically play some cards and stuff happens. It's, it's almost snap. In fact, you have a deck and you just turn cards and, and kind of react to it. Um, uh, and it's fun if you're, again, if you're a fan and you know the characters and you read all the, the little bits of flavor text on the cards and which I do and Susanna doesn't. Um, so the fun is kind of stymied in that regard as well. Um, also, it's it's incredibly unbalanced, which is a theme with Martin Wallace and the games that we've had where uh, um, uh, with uh, Study in Emerald, uh, in that certainly with two players, it, it can just swing wildly. Um, uh, and if you're just on a roll with the cards, that's it. The other person sits there and does nothing, you know? Uh, but it, it could it could be very clever on paper. There's some great combos you can do, and if 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 someone is lucky and knows what they're doing and buys into the the, the theme of the game, like you can have a great time with it. But in general, that's not going to be the experience I think for for seventy percent of the people playing it. So uh, so yeah, a bit frustrating, basically. But you still own it. Still own it, yes. I want to play uh, this one as well. So, well, very happily. 
Susanna might let us. She would use the A or an A on that regard on on that game. But uh, yeah, it's it's one uh, it'll never go in the soul and regret just because you know I'm a fan. So so I'll keep yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, just I, I just wish it would, there was a bit more to it. Really, that's it. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, my number eighteen. I guess you all have heard of. It's Castles of Burgundy. Hey. 18. What? What? Hey, just be glad it's on there. At least we can yeah, all agree it should be on there. No, no, much, you, much think it's, you think much, it's too low? Much, uh, very low. I mean, I played a lot of games by now. Yeah, so yeah. for me, it's, 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 okay, it's quite man. high. Yeah. It's, it's an amazing game. So it's yeah. It, it's, have you, have you played a lot of, of it, though? <sighs> Let's see. I've played on BGA about maybe ten times. Two times with me. Yeah. And I think I played one more time. Yeah. Sounds like you need to play more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this, yeah this one yeah. is in the hundreds for me. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. Mean, seriously. I mean, I love the game. It's. I think a, a little bit of um, drawback for me is that I'm so bad at rolling dice. <laughs> this game uh, can be I, terrible for me. He played with me. I had snake eyes five or six times. Mm -hmm. uh, That's was... usually what I do. <laughs> it was like, what? Yeah. What is this? <laughs> so, but yeah, it's it's a fun game. I, I mean, I can't complain much about it. I mean, it's top 50 so and we all know everything about it i i, I got the um, the uh, new special edition oh, with all the bits no yeah no no not all the uh, no and he's stuff got like the that. tiles so mm -hmm. he's got the acrylic tiles but it yeah. doesn't have the statues no. I've got okay, the but statues, you... but I don't have the acrylic tiles. Right. Oh, you have the... you haven't gotten all of them, right? No, no. I, but uh... Just the castles. Yeah, because there the is most... one one for every. Building. I know, I know. Well, the most important see. thing that I could see in in the new set was just those modular uh, player um, boards. Essentially, those because are that's amazing. what we're those lacking. The... Yeah, and that, would that, kill that's for that you need. Yeah. Yeah, and also looks bright and nice now. I mean, I, I, I I've got all the, three the, versions. Yeah, they the all original. Have something. Yeah, the original. I mean, it looks okay, honestly. But I want my games if they can look nicer. Another I box that I saw yeah. and I was like, "This looks dry. I need this in my life." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Stay so. So Kelly's number 18 is another, uh, not roll and write, but flip and write. And it's a really fast one. This is a filler flip and write, which works for families and uh, beginners. It's a gateway game of sorts and called Silver and Gold. A small game where you uh, draft islands and then you flip up uh tetris shapes to fill in uh the islands with and you're trying to fill in the complete island uh most of the time and also to cover the icons to get bonuses and stuff from the the cards and the cards uh, uh, you can write on the cards with a dry eraser marker yeah. so it's super easy to bring uh, on parties and with family and on, if you're on a trip and stuff like that a fast game, it's not super deep, but it's satisfying for what it is. I really need to get into roll and rights and flip and rights, uh, apparently, because... Agree. I have a few of those. Yeah. So you You're can... going to educate me. And co-op games. You're going to educate They're the, me. the perfect yeah. travel games, from what I can see, really. Mm -hmm. And good for solo as well, usually, a lot of those games. But this this yeah. one is two to four. But is yeah. It? Mm. It's more of a party, quick style mm. type of game compared to like a Dice the Fleet game. That's more like a real game in a, in a sense, not yeah. a filler. 
Mm. All right. Silver and gold. Yep. Another one for the list. <laughs> All right. Number 18 for me. Um, I thought that Kamisado was my highest um, abstract game, but I was wrong because I forgot this one is abstract as well. It's a crossover with Saskia. Uh, one to four players rolling dice. Sagrada. Oh. Building those windows. Uh, it has, for me, as in memories, one of the best plays I have ever had of any board game because I uh, had a perfect score at a certain point. I uh, needed to roll a six and I rolled a six and everybody went nuts at the table. It was amazing it's just a terrific puzzle game it's something that makes my brain go "Ooh, what can i do with this one um there you can have bad games obviously because it's all random and you're just choosing out of a pool and uh, you hope that someone else doesn't get that color or that uh particular number but uh, sagrada just uh, i love to play it plays well with everything Number 18 for Saskia is also a crossover with me. It was lower on my list because it's been a while since we played it, but she still has those same memories, and for her, the memories uh, outweigh the rest. Imperial 2030, the very dry uh, stock or um, uh, shares buying game where we control... Uh, uh, countries and try to invade other countries to get more shares uh, to, to uh, make everything mm. go up in value. It, it's, it's an amazing game that is overlooked because it looks very dull and dry and we love those kind of games. But it's better with know. more players. Yeah, okay. apparently I do. <laughs> so Imperial so 2030 number It eight, plays number eight, up to yeah. six. Yes, and it's amazing with five or six because of the uh, losing um, control of cu countries. So you have uh, no more control of any country. So you can be uh, Switzerland and just start buying up shares or mm. having control and just tanking another country into the ground to make the share uh, value go down. It's it's just so much fun and it's it's very mathy and and thinky, but also strategic without dice in risk, like mm. risk you you have to control uh, areas to get more and this does the same without that kind of battle because there are no dice. It's just majority. It's like I have two tanks, you have one tank, yeah, you lose a tank. Oh, and the other one loses so, a tank. So there wasn't dice in the game. There are no dice in the game. Be because I, I thought you said it. <laughs> because um, it sounds almost like an 18xx game with the shares. Yeah, of... yeah, yeah. But it's, it's there are no dice. Uh... Yeah, yeah. 18xx don't have that. So if there had been, it wouldn't have been comparable. So yeah, it it just works. Mm -hmm. It's. Uh... It's a classic. It has been reprinted a couple of times. I think it's out of print at the moment again, but uh, we have it in our collection and it's... Um, it, I don't think it's language dependent, is it? There is no text, no necessar necessary in-game text, so we can play it when we get there. All right. Too many games to play. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Uh, well, we can do. So, 17, we have a game that's been talked about, and I, I, I bet everyone played it. So, we have King of Tokyo. Mm -hmm. uh, Monster Yatsi. Yeah, really much. Yeah, it is. And I like Yatsi. It was almost on the list, but it yeah. kind of felt taking place. King of Tokyo is and, a better choice. That's fine. Yes. <laughs> no, it, it just adds so much to, to Yetzi. And uh, I, I, I like deceptively simple games, you know, or the, the clever games that are deceptively simple and just quick. And you can play two players or up to six, I think. It's it's 
great for every occasion or just in between games when you just don't have patience for anything else. It's great. And I love probability, so it mm -hmm. this is my brain happy. Yeah, this is one of the games that Saskia does not like. Why not? <laughs> Does she have a reason or it's just a gut thing? It's just like, oh, roll, 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 roll. Am I dead? Okay, I can go to another table now. Thank uh, you. Bye. <laughs> we, had a, we had a friend who would play with us quite a bit. Um, was it Wizard, I think, mm -hmm. who, who would play, but he would refuse to be aggressive. So he yeah. would always play defensively. He still won a few times, uh, pretty much as much as anyone else. But it was just his thing. He would, he would never go for claws or never go for the cards that gave you fighting bonuses or anything like that. Um, just He would go stand in the middle. She would go to Tokyo, stand and just away to take die. It. Just, right. just to take it. Just I... either you die or I die. Well, you'd be so upset, wouldn't you, Suzanne? <laughs> yes, uh, I, I would oblige quickly, though, don't worry. Because <laughs> <laughs> it came up before, I think, because it was on my list. But you didn't tell them about um, when you won the tournament. What? Oh, so, no, the silly tournament at the no, Games no. Cafe. I we played to a tournament of King of Tokyo. It was the first tournament they had there for King of Tokyo, and they then had it, uh, if it was every week or every month, for, wow. for a couple of years afterwards. Susanna's name was on the board. They had a board dedicated to it. Um, right. But the fun thing was, was that fun. It was fun for us. Uh, we actually came in first and second in the tournament, and there was prizes. So. So there was, um, uh, at the time, I think, uh, the Penguin and, or was yeah. it two sets of the Penguin special it was character? two sets of the Penguin, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, which he yeah. hadn't, he was, a, he was a con exclusive, I think, or uh, at the time, so they had to give away. It is in uh, the second edition, you can... It, yeah, I know he was included in that. Uh, so so I, I graciously gave my copy because it was for first and second place each got one of these these sets so i gave mine to the to the i think it was a girl who came in third yeah. and felt very uh good about myself i owned all the con exclusives because i had a shop uh, mm. but i sold the game with all all those exclusives uh because it was the dutch version and i no, it cards. is language dependent yeah. so it wouldn't have been played anymore in sweden Mm -hmm. mm. Great, Great game. game. Great. Yeah. Game. Uh, mm. Magic the Gathering uh, designer, right? Uh, Richard Garfield. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I think that's why I bought it originally. Uh, Me too. And then Me it, too. It, it, sat, it sat on the shelf for at least a couple of years without pretty much being open. And then one I day we just yeah. cracked the screen. Rally. Robo Rally yeah. and Magic. And then I was like, oh, King of Tokyo, let's buy this. So. Yeah, it was another one we didn't play for a long time because I thought it looked stupid. So. <laughs> yeah. It's kitty, yeah. 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 Well, that's I good. And then we got the we got the the two were they two Halloween expansions? It was yeah. two sort of mini box no, expansions that were Halloween. Yeah. The Halloween. No, they were both Halloween expansions, I think. And so it got the extra uh, orange dice. No, Cthulhu only came for the second edition. So no, no, no. That was for that was for King of New York. Sorry, that was for King of New York. Okay. Um, no, there was like a scarecrow and a boogie woogie man or something. Mm -hmm. uh, just, just, uh, and I think they introduced some extra mechanics as well. But it was mainly because uh, one of the sets I think came with the orange extra orange dice. We had a set of dice each when we were playing, so that was, that was cool. Uh, nice. Spoiled. I'm curious if you like uh, Garfield stuff. Do you like lasagna? Lasagna? Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, the Mindbot game, which he uh, released. Uh, oh, which? Maybe. Uh, how do you spell it? Years ago? Mindbug. Mindbug. I yeah, haven't played it. It's a head to head small deck of but cards it came out game. after oh. i i quit the hobby again so uh, it, it has gone on like quite yeah. a bus and uh, yeah. and uh, when you have spoken about the games you love i was thinking about this game that it's yeah. the, the artwork's very king of tokyo mm -hmm. 
and the hunger I saw as try. well from him. Yeah. So yeah, uh, yeah, that looks really cool. I mean, just looking at the art, it looks really uh, cool. Into that, it's it's like he he did. Uh, so King of New York, I didn't like. It's not a great game. Yeah, uh, you mentioned and, yeah. Uh, Treasure Hunter was okay. It was a fun game. I own it. Uh, it's it's a simple game. Uh, Robo Rally the remake was not great. Um, and then Shadow Blades, I have no idea. Bunny Kingdom, I own. I have to play again. But Keyforge was Bunny such a disaster Kingdom. that I was like, I'm done with this designer because Keyforge was bad. Like but Keyforge really was bad. huge in the states, man. Oh it, my it, god! It, like the as well. pre-release of that, and then then it just disappeared. So yeah, whatever yeah. happened because. There. You, ca you can't change the decks, and there are decks that are overpowered, and you're buying just the deck. It's it's like, it's super so weird. The, so, ah, you have no an deck overpowered building. deck? No, you have an overpowered deck. I do not. Game over. It's yeah. super random and super, like, instead of buying booster boxes, you're buying complete decks and hoping you get a good one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's stupid. It is beyond stupid. And it's it brought up a lot of money. That's that's what they did. They they made a DLC game. That's what they. Made. Yeah, the selling point was that every deck you bought was completely unique. Yeah. Yeah. And so, that's when I said right, right. design is done for me. So yeah, who knows? So how can you maybe... how can you balance in that and play test that perfectly? Yeah, there is no balance. You can't. There was no balance. <laughs> no. Yeah. Sorry. Tangent over. <laughs> when, you a, when you bought a deck, was it a random deck, or you knew what deck yeah. you were buying? Yeah. Everybody has a unique random deck. Oh, it is so random, it's in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a certain color, sure, but it was 100%. So every deck was printed with at least one card different. Ah, right, okay. Weird. Yeah. It's kind of reaching for a concept there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, the hunger looks interesting, though. Now I've kind of yeah. digressed onto that. Anyway, that was Susanna's <laughs> yeah, choice. Yeah. <laughs> But is it me? Are you done? Yeah. All right. Okay. Uh, this would be a quick one for me because uh, Susanna brought it up before. Uh, Nostalgia Escape from Atlantis. Uh, it's just, it's a very silly game that kind of shouldn't work, kind of doesn't work. It's kind of amazing when it works. Um, yeah, but it always, it, it, when, when we play a two player, it, kind of comes down to the very last man which is great yeah. uh it's your last man swimming always and my last man in a boat always <laughs> uh but it's it's it basically is no room for any other dynamic at that point because oh. the game kind because that's how we play the game can't play out any other way because there's not enough random uh uh random chance to it at all like sure you could have the monsters swimming around and maybe one extra gets eaten but uh it's it's really the sort of game where you're just going to break it open because you know you're going to have fun with it and it kind of doesn't matter and if you do have some people around for sunday dinner and you can't be bothered teaching something that's complicated it's it, you get it out uh and it's it's simple enough to teach it's noisy enough for those who like a bit of noise it's tactical enough for those who like a bit of tactics whatever you know it's it's just this three dimensionality to it because of the island and stuff um and it's just you know it's good it's fun it's uh, it's nice and to play i've always had fun playing it it's whatever you think about it what i would love to try is some of the the newer versions of it um because I, I think I think there might might have been sort of some improvements from our, our old copy, uh, and and that might be interesting. I also think it's it's just perfect for a retheme into a um, people trapped in a in a shopping mall surrounded by a horde of zombies, and and many afternoons I have sort of started dreaming about how that would work exactly. Yeah. I can see but, Magnus uh, is on board. Zombies always. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> zombies have a bad rep in the in the board games world at the moment, and and they 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 got over overdone, but their time will come again, I believe. So yeah, I'm yeah. super hyped about uh, GMT game which I bought recently, uh, uh, Plum Island Horror. It's oh? a co-op zombie survival tower defense type of game. 
Oh, this sounds amazing. Roll your Plum eyes. Island. Yeah. Horror. It has no miniatures, Susanna. No miniatures at all. No, no, oh, co-op. Co -op. Co -op. Oh no, I've seen I've seen the cover of this and yeah. thought it looked very very cool. Yeah. Oh it, yeah. It, it, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm into this. Old comic, uh, comic. Uh huh. Uh, oh, it looks awesome. Name. Yeah, this one has gotten high praise. You so see, this, this is perfect. This is a game that they could have gone mental, uh, really into producing miniatures and all sorts of stuff and slapping a whack, uh, a huge price tag on. But they haven't. They've kept it simple and old school, with cardboard pieces, mm -hmm. simple artwork that works. Uh, how much was it? What's the price on it? Not it's that we should quite be expensive, actually. It's is like it? <laughs> okay, they take it all back. Ninety euros, maybe. Uh, but you can play it single player. Mm -hmm. Oh, this this is going straight to the top of my. Uh... <laughs> oh yeah, very much so. Oh, this is a dude yeah. riding a tractor lawnmower. Yes. It's perfect. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm 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 hyped, hyped to try it out. <laughs> uh, oh, there's also infected Sasquatches. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And leper and messiahs. Brilliant. Murder hornets. Okay, no, I'm I'm all over this. Yes, and, uh, I might even get ordered tomorrow if I can find one. Yeah, very cool. All right, so uh, we my seventeen. <laughs> we remember about rolling snake eyes. Yeah. Well, there's a solution for this in uh -huh. space base. Ah, oh, great pick, great pick. Because you can invest in snake eyes. Yeah. Just buy ships at the one slot, and you're yep. good to go. <laughs> Roll them snake size all you want. The Machikoro so, upgrade. Yeah, we talked about this one, so I don't have was much minus. to add add on 41 it. Forty-one but... and Saskia, I think as well. So no? it's come up three times then. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so it, it's a drafting. Looking at yeah. the photos, yeah. Okay. Uh, not drafting. You, no. you no? start with uh, everybody start rolls with... on their turn with with the die and uh, buy something at the market to upgrade their space base. Uh, but if you are the roller, everybody else can still get something depending on the cards they have. Yeah. So uh -huh. if you have a like a space uh, or um, what do you call it, uh, ship on slot one, for example. And then you buy another ship on slot one. You take the card from the slot one that you had previously. You take it and flip it over and put it mm -hmm. under. So you, so now you score something when other people roll one. And you can do it multiple okay. times. So that's that's why, it. yeah, yeah, I'm with you. It's an engine builder with dice. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's just fun. Yeah. And the, there's several expansions for it. I have some more coming in. Uh, I think if you play it a lot, you might want to have yeah. at least one expansion, yeah. but they aren't necessary. Like you can play the base set pretty much, not all the time, but <laughs> quite much. Yeah. yeah. So number 17 for Kelly. It's a two-player game, and it's called Botanic. Another this nature game... type, yeah. Uh, no, it's not really nature. Is maybe, it? yeah, it's steampunk nature, maybe. Ah, uh, yeah. So... Botanicus or Botanic? Botanic, with a K. Ah. So, a two-player game. So, it has a really clever mm -hmm. drafting mechanism. So in the middle, you have five tiles slotted. Uh, and you also have row for five of your tiles, which you uh, draft. But to place them on your board, you need to first put another tile on those five tiles in the same row that isn't the same color or the same uh, type of pipe. So we're building like pipes that connect. Like and then Oracle? they get then they will shoot out. <laughs> it's so hard to explain, but it's it's really clever. Um, a clever mechanism of gaining the tiles. So you have to think about 
do I do I do this now? I I maybe I push out a tile for my opponent too, but I really need this tile now. So you have to think about what the other person drafts. Yeah. So each round you draft from three tiles. You place them either in the middle or in your uh, your own row. And then you just go until all the tiles are gone and score up the points. But it's nature with pipes. <laughs> yeah. it's The theme is not really there. It's abstract, but it looks really nice. Yes, I mean, I want the, to art is, the art is divisive, maybe. Quite unique art, but I like it a lot. <clears throat> no, I think it looks really good. I have no idea what I'm looking at, how it, <laughs> how it might work. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's so hard to explain, but once you have it in front of you and explain and play it some rounds, you get the, the sense of, ah, okay. And then you realize, ah, it's even more clever and deep than okay. first. Cool, cool. So you I can like hate those. draft and you can, like, oh, it's yes. so hard to explain. Hate draft. Yeah, yeah that's, hate... that's a new one. <laughs> yeah, you can hate yeah. draft, but in a specific way, like... It's so hard to explain. You need to keeping play. a piece, keeping a piece that you know the other one needs, mm -hmm. but you don't necessarily need. That it's like ah, I'm keeping this. It doesn't score me points. Uh, it sounds exactly what would happen. Yeah, yeah and, it, it, and in this game, you can use it not to take it for yourself, but to push out your other tiles. <laughs> so okay. it has some use. This it's, sounds great. It can be. This sounds great. really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh -huh. I like that. <laughs> great pick. But, uh, I think the artwork looks great, though. I don't yeah, know if it's it does. As you yeah, say really divisive, does. but I, uh, yeah, um, the theme just pulls me straight in. Yeah, that was Kelly's number seventeen. All right, my number seventeen. Uh, is it my second felt? I think so. Yeah. Um, this one got a, a reprint uh, and a re-theme, which I don't think was necessary because the original theme was great. Um, uh, it's action selection with cards, uh, and it's printed on the cards which different actions uh, you can do with it. Um, you're, you're building canals, you're building houses, putting uh, famous people in those houses. Uh, you're getting rid of uh, the plague of rats or uh, a flood or fire. It's called Bruges. It is no longer in print. It is very expensive to get that version. I think it's reprinted as, let's see. Ba, 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 ba. It's in Queen's City Collection. Hamburg, yes. Yeah. So it's reprinted as Hamburg with the expansion in it. I don't know why, because Bruges was beautiful. It was a beautiful game. Uh, and what, and the what's the difference? Uh, so Bruges um, has one expansion, which if you find the base game, Bruges, it's, expansion, uh, it's expensive. The expansion is even more expensive than the base mm -hmm. game. Uh, and in Hamburg, it is included, I think. That's that's mm -hmm. the and of course the city is different, so it has the expansion with it. With it's it's about the canals, I think it 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 adds something. I haven't played the expansion for Bruges, but I have it in Dutch, so I really want to play it. Uh, I've played the base game over and over and over again. Don't think it needs an expansion, and I I really really love it. It's I think you have four or five cards in your hand, you're, and you're playing four of those, so you have some selection. Uh, to do stuff, so many options to to uh, score points. It's like the other felts, like there are mini games within a game. You're doing yeah. one of the whatever actions to to score some points. Uh, but Bruges is amazing. I think I think this is one of the ones that Saskia did not like as much. <laughs> hmm. She loves felt games. But she wasn't sold with the whole I need to choose something to do with my cards thing. Uh, she she had the same issue with Concordia. She does yeah, she doesn't get she it. Like multi-use cards. Yeah, the action selection part and then like 
oh, I forgot this or that. And, and she, 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 thought, she wants to be limited in her choices, I think, uh, in her yeah. games. Um, Saskia's number 17 uh, is a game that needs an expansion because if you play the base game, it's unbalanced and okay for, for the most part. Viticulture essential edition with the Tuscany expansion because you need four seasons, not two seasons. Uh, in the expansion, it, it upgrades the boards. Uh, so we are uh, getting grapes from our fields uh, and uh, storing them somewhere in, um, in, in vats and then making them into champagne or wine or, or whatever and delivering that. Or we're giving tours on our uh, property to, to get money and, and stuff like that. Or we're doing um, other stuff. It's, it's, it has so many things you can do. And it's worker placement. So I put my pawn somewhere. I do that action. You put your pawn somewhere. And in the base game, it only has two seasons, which is not enough. Like you did with Elysium, you need <laughs> more. You really <clears throat> need more. And with the four seasons, you get more actions. You get more of that feeling like I am going somewhere with this. And uh, the expansion also uh, changes the fact that if you're screwed with your cards, which is very important uh, for the base game, like, oh, I got bad cards. Yep, it's game over for me. I, I pull some more cards, more bad cards. Great. You can throw them away, away to do different stuff. So it is definitely more balanced with the expansion. It just needs it. it it's too bad because I really I love the theme, uh, wine stuff. But uh, yeah. Viticulture Essential Edition needs Tuscany. Yeah, I need to try with uh, the expansion. I'm I... not convinced that it will change your mind that much. It will maybe put it from, like, I don't know what you rated it, a three, four, five. Uh, no, no. Maybe it, one... I, I, I don't think it's a bad game. I think I yeah. rated maybe a six or something like that. Yeah. But the thing that broke it for me was you, about you talking about the cards. Because yeah. one guy or girl can start with a card which is super good at the beginning, like yep. the perfect card. And I played several games where my my card was, my visitor card, was like, I need to discard three other cards to do something that was almost as good as the, the other card, but that person yeah. could do it right away. Like, I was baffled. What? What? What is this? <laughs> yeah. And some people don't mind uh, the visitor cards I've heard in in the Viticulture original, but I would like more balance in that stuff. Uh, it, the seasons, I can see also yeah. it's nice to have more seasons, but the cards... It is the, It is okay with part. two players. Um, it needs more. It's one of those games that, uh, like like a Scythe and, and his other games, it needs more players. Uh, um, but yeah, okay. one to six, three or four, I think is is best. Uh, it's it's from Stegmeier, just just so you know. Uh, <laughs> All right. Uh, right. Yeah, Fiticulture number seventeen for Saskia. All right. Okay. Excellent. Sounds interesting. Anything that it's worth the placement is. <laughs> it's like oh, I would like to try. Right, so uh, 16, yes. Yep. Azul, but Sintra. <laughs> yes. So I, yeah. I, the, I, I find the normal Azul actually quite boring, very restricted. Oh, you have to put your pieces here. And, you know... That flip your board around, I mean... Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that is much harder. On, on the other side, but um, there's... Yeah, I, I find that very, you know, square restricted. Sintra is, is just more fun and you have so many more options um, to play and even to... No, you don't have more options to screw the opponents. You kind of have to take whatever is there or you screw yourself. I found um, it more restrictive because of the, the, the tiles like that. But yeah, I, I understand what you're getting at. It's it's weird. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just more fun. And it I, I like the pieces better as, as well. They they feel really nice. I'm... The glasses. 
the glasses mm. we call it glasses yeah it's, it's beautiful fun. beautiful pieces yeah, yeah like 20 minutes but half an hour very nice just even the i mean it's not really a mechanic but the the tower thing to throw the broken glass into yeah uh, it's it's, again it's a visceral thing that it really is quite that's satisfying to do uh, of course it's a gimmick but it's a nice touch that they didn't have to do and sometimes yeah. especially with kind of smaller games like that you miss out on those things mm. and to have that it's um, you know it just it's it's instantly a fun thing that you you almost kind of want to to, to fight over who gets to do that or who gets to pour them back into the bag afterwards you know, speak for yourself well, yeah, well, I, I, I am. I like to do <laughs> no, I, you know, I just, I, I, I enjoy doing that. So there is a tactile na nature to the game that I think the tiles in uh, the first as well look gorgeous, and they're, they're nice and and they're weighty, but they're flat, and they don't really. There's no feel to them, like the uh, in. They have in, some rounded edges. Yeah. There's some yeah. rounded edges, sure, but but Real again, though. the design like the in Sintra, they're designed with a texture on to help colorblind people. So they've taken the idea of something that actually helps people and integrated it into the design in such a way that actually adds to the design for everybody. Uh, and uh, I think it has a pattern on on all the uh, original ones as well for colorblind people just to <laughs> to view no. but yeah, 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 oh, yeah so no, i guess feeling, what i'm saying yeah, yeah. is is blind people could actually yeah yeah as yeah. well maybe but yeah maybe that's going too far what i would love uh, because i own i own both so never gonna get rid of them out of my collection they're both amazing games what i would have loved the most is a game like this but you make a Roman mosaic or something like you have to make mm. sure, sure. Yeah. Please. So, so there's a point to it, not just oh, oh, okay, there's a line, there you go. Yeah, and that you can choose yeah, yeah. like, uh, I want to go for this uh picture, you want to go for that picture, and, and it's it has mm -hmm. the colors on it. And it's called like jigsaw, that. no? My go do a jigsaw, uh, no? You know, it also sounds it's not the like, same. yeah. Uh, the one you brought up, Sagrada. There's a yeah. leg legacy yeah. game of it where you make real windows and stuff. You oh, oh, cool. Okay. Didn't know that. Great choice, though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, me. Yeah. Okay, so we're into Games Workshop now. Yeah. Uh, and this is uh, it's a, it's a modern Games Workshop. Again, board game. Uh, it's okay. a series that they're running uh, called Warhammer Underworlds, uh, yep. and it's it's their take on several skirmish. things. I, uh, it's skirmish, but it's it's also deck builder. Uh, so it's as much a card game really as it is a miniatures game. Uh, you could say it's it's a deck builder that because it's Games Workshop they've added mm -hmm. miniatures to it. But I mean, essentially, it's a, an arena skirmish game. Um, but the format really works very well because they they run it in sort of seasons. So uh, pretty much every year, uh, there's a new uh, base set Baseball. that includes, yeah. you know, the board, the dice, tokens, and a couple of uh, new new uh, war gangs. And then they'll release a series of separate add-on. You could call them expansions, but basically uh, individual gangs that come with their own pre-built decks. Uh, that you can then uh, buy extra cards or extra decks. You can make your own decks up, although they've kind of stripped that back to be more user-friendly. So it is mostly about these pre-built decks, uh, the, the sort of the main gameplay is. Um, but there is a, a full deck-building version in there. But from a, from a miniature designer point of view, I mean, th this is one of their... They're cheaper, almost more more high street store aimed products, but it has some of the most gorgeous, most uh, well engineered uh, miniatures that they they've ever produced in there. The the, the sculpts are absolutely Agreed. gorgeous, and they're not and unique. And unique, and they're not as expensive as their 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 bigger game. Uh, I mean, you're still paying. I don't know, 20, 25 quid for maybe five miniatures. Um, 
maybe less depending on their size and stuff. But but yeah. they are complex. They are uh, characterful, uh, and the the gameplay itself. It, I mean, it is it is. Uh, it's not card driven, it's card accentuated, shall we say. I mean, it's the same sort of thing. You have activations, you have action points, they can do certain things, and then you play cards to make things even more interesting or, or not for the other person as it might be. Um, but it's quick, it's fast, it looks gorgeous. Again, uh, another thing is that the, the miniatures come in, in um, uh, they're not just gray, they come in, in a specific color that ties in with their 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 theme or their faction so you don't even have to paint these which again for me i'm torn between do i paint them as as wargaming miniatures or do i leave them as they are because they're board game miniatures uh, i've kind of depending on on the faction if it's something that i would use for another army perhaps i, I paint them anyway but it's just it's a very clever little game it does really well. It's very good for competitive gaming. It's geared towards tournament play. It's one of the most comprehensively lawyer uh, uh, legalese, shall we say, filled rule books uh, uh, from them I think I've ever read. Um, and, and not in a complicated way, just in the way that it has uh, lots of examples, lots of iter reiterations, lots of appendices to qualify. Uh, but you don't need. I mean, if you, if you can read a rule book, you'll you'll get through it. But it's just it's it's good. It's clever. It's tight. It's a great gaming experience, and you can. It's it's the sort of thing that I, I have a lot of friends. We play a lot of war games. We go and play. Spend a big day playing some big crazy game, and we'll always carry. Uh, you know, either a war or war band or the whole box set or whatever with us, and we'll break that out just at the end of the day, just to finish finish things up. It's great. I, Love it. I, I own. I, I own the first two sets. The, the first, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I only uh, came to it quite also, late, actually. So uh, it's also uh, yeah, it's, that it's, has a click system instead of the you need to. Um, there's no gluing involved. Yeah, it's no just gluing involved. They click. Yeah, yeah, and the, they fit together so well. So, like, honestly, I I could gush for, well, at length about just how the well first engineered these things are. There was an issue with the uh, the, the barbarian dudes. They um, if you click them in in each other, uh, the heads yeah. would pop off. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to glue on some heads. Right, right, right. Okay. Well, yeah. I mean, I've got a couple where the feet kind of flap slightly, or or whatever. So you know, a little glue doesn't hurt. But uh, uh, in general, they're just they're very very clever. Um, Great pick. So, but but it's just uh, as a modern output from them that really just is something that stands stands to one side from anything else they do. Uh, I can't recommend it enough. It's just it slides into the, what is board gaming these days so well. So yeah, I'd recommend it to anyone pretty much. Susanna, however, tried it and didn't like it. So another game I, I created solo rules for, <laughs> just, <laughs> just so I can play with it. I don't think I've heard of it, but I, I haven't been dabbling that much in. It has Warhammer. a great app on uh, Steam. I think it has all the armies in it. So. Mm -hmm. I know one game, uh, board game of Warhammer. So let's see if that's your number one. <laughs> I don't think he. The so is it a Workshop? Uh, so Games Workshop is it? Only uh, published by Games Workshop, or yeah, 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 not fantasy yeah, flight yeah. stuff. It's not gonna uh, be that one, Magnus. Uh, no, 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 I thought no. of that one as well, uh, uh, but um, I need to yeah. play it again because it just missed my top fifty. Well, uh, which, I need to know which one we're talking. I think I know which one we might be talking about, but we're not allowed to say, are we? No, no. no I, I'm not it. sure if it, if it is fantasy flight because uh, I, I've seen it. Flights. I've yeah, seen yeah. it at, at a store with. Warhammer stuff, but maybe yeah, yeah, I think it's okay. fancy flight. Uh, we'll it's, talk uh, about it after the show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So my number sixteen. 16. Yeah. We have also talked about before, but yeah, Susanna has mentioned it. Maybe Dave too. It's Gaia Project. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We need both. to play this one. I own it. It's yeah. <laughs> so. The first one I've tried in this series was obviously Terra Mystica, mm -hmm. which I thought was okay. 
Mm. But when I tried Gaia project the first time, it just, I don't know, it just clicked with me. So the, the main issue I had with Terra Mystica, which I thought was quite boring compared to Gaia project was the tech tracks. So the tech tracks in Gaia projects are really like, it elevates the game to another level. It's like you get stuff from it and there are different tracks and yeah. And also it's more, it's not, yeah, it's a bit more open, I guess, but you can also close stuff in clever ways. I don't know. It's just uh, the better game, in my opinion. Best width, two, three, four. I uh, played it at three and four. I don't think it matters that much. Okay. Three or four. I I guess if you you want a slightly shorter game, three is the way to go. I haven't tried it at two. I really want to play it, and I only have Saskia here, so it's gonna be two for me. So mm, you can play. It we it can play it together. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Sorry. So, and not much else to talk about it because <laughs> we have talked in length about it. So I will still don't understand to... how to deal with the Gaia planets, but whatever. Yeah. Oh, uh, we can talk about it later too. <laughs> well, <laughs> the the strategy and how to think about that, but it just takes yeah. two turns. Two turns in such a short game. I don't know. Uh, it's quite long. The The last round can be almost as long as the entire game, if you have planet right. So, I mean, you, the last game I played, I think I had in total maybe around 60 turns the whole game. Oh. Oh, you, but uh, to to Gaia form a planet, you have to wait to another mm -hmm. whole turn. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, like another round. Unless it's so. already a green planet there. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't think we are playing it right. <laughs> I am it's sure we are playing it right. We are talking I just... about the same game here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh. yeah there are some some factions are better than others uh, mm -hmm. dealing with the Gaia planets, and depending on uh, what you have uh, what goals you have for the game it uh, may not even be like a big deal you can skip them. Yeah. and even if there are goals for that game you can have other options so and that's also the one thing i love about gaia project is the the random setup which makes all games totally different that's like, true mm -hmm. yeah so a, a different race can be much better with a different setup, for example. But yeah, uh, number 16 for Kelly is a crossover with me from uh, the previous episode. Yeah. And it's Renature, the <laughs> domino. Yeah, um, the one we all want to play, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like that. very much. So there you have another voice for it, voting for it. Excellent. All right. That's it. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, number 16 for me. Another worker placement. Two to four players works well with everyone, I think. Um, I love this one the first time I played it because it had something very different. Your workers, they die. So this one is called Hut Dorop. Or in English, village. village. We are, yep. We have our own um, uh, little farm, and we are uh, planting our family members in the village to do jobs, like um, uh, the the mason, or or uh, go to the church, or uh, to, to become a priest, or whatever you want them to do, or travel around and get some uh, stuff. Um, and it's every time you take an action, so you put something, uh, someone there, you get a cube that is on uh, the tile, uh, but also time passes and there's a timer on your map. It's in the original version. It is around your farm. 
uh, and then uh, that is death that is going around. And at a certain point, he crosses the bridge, and one of your workers has to die. The point of the game is the oldest, so you have uh, different generations, so you have stickers on your meeples that says one, two, three. <laughs> I see. That. The oldest genera generation has to die, and you're trying to get them into the village chronicle. Like this, what this priest was amazing. So he's the first priest to die. He scores points at the end of the game because he was a priest, blah, blah, yada, yada. Uh, but if too many of those die, they go to unmarked graves because they're not remarkable anymore. You're trying to uh, get your uh, meeples to diversify. learn stuff, yeah, to learn stuff, to get stuff, uh, to get stuff, resources. But they also need to die at a certain point so you can uh, get into the village chronicle. It's a book. In the there's now a big box version. It is just really a, a different board. It's a book where you put your meeples in. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. There's, there's actually like a graveyard in the corner of the board. As well, yeah, there are there, so there's a book and their graveyard, yeah. and that's the unnamed graves. <laughs> that's amazing, yeah. It is, yeah. A, it's an amazing game. Uh, I'm glad it got reprinted. It the the new version doesn't have the, the track around the uh your, your farm. I don't know why, because I love that theme like death is going around and then jumps the I when he goes over the bridge, someone dies. Uh, but they changed that, and the new artwork, I like it. it it's hit or miss by, by uh, with a lot of people, but the big box has two expansions that I really want to play, so I'm I'm tempted to get that one uh, because yeah, you can't get the old expansions anymore anywhere, mm. and they're very expensive. Uh, but yeah, number sixteen, Village, great worker placement game. Uh, for Saskia, number 16 is one I haven't played and I cannot talk about a lot. It's by Bruno Catala, two to four players, and it's called Yamatai. We still own the game. I really wanted to play this game, but I just didn't get around to it. A lot of people thought this was the reiteration of Five Tribes. It, does, it has nothing to do with Five Tribes, as far as I saw. Uh, it's with Islands. Uh, I mean, yeah... I'll play it someday. Very close. I, yes, I hope. I yeah. hope it's it's going to be great because I love Five Tribes. Uh, another game that nearly got in my top fifty. It was like this is this is getting really tough. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't like Five Tribes because of one thing: the bidding uh, at uh, for, uh, to see who's first player, second player, third player. That that stuff. Uh, I, I didn't like that. Part of the game that's why it didn't uh, come in my i didn't uh go into my top 50 but yamatai looks great i want to play it number 16 for saskia cool. okay <clears throat> halfway through 